Hi everybody, this video, we're going to go over how to make a 3D model of your clock project that you'll be doing in the wood shop. We're going to be using the SketchUp Online. To get to this, you'll need to log into your Trimble Connect account that you've already done for the practice models. Once you're to your home page, you're going to click Create New. We'll load up that new model space. Once you're here to your blank document, first thing you're going to do is click on this Untitled in the upper left. We're going to save that to your SketchUp folder and we are going to call it Clock Model. Make sure you have that saved first before you start, so that should say Clock Model. Once you have that, we're going to click on the gentleman with the ukulele and delete him out of the space. We do not need him there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer to the origin and we're going to start making the base of your clock. To do that, you need the rectangle tool, which is R for the keyboard shortcut, or it's over here in the side. I tap the R key, and we get our cursor. So we're going to start it at the origin, just like before you click once and release. Start dragging it out this way. Again, I'm not holding the button down, just moving the mouse. We're going to type in the dimensions 12 inches by five and a half inches. So real easy, it's type in 12, comma, 5.5. Five. Look in the mentions box at the bottom there, 12 comma 5.5 and hit enter and we'll get a rectangle. To see that closer, the easiest way is to zoom extents. So shift plus Z zooms us in. We're going to orbit around here. Now we have the dimensions of our base. Now we need to pull this up three dimensionally to be the thickness of our wood. So we're going to use the P key for push-pull. Push-pull is also over here in the side. Uh, we're going to make this three-quarters of an inch thick. The easy way to do that is do 0.75. So we're going to make sure this highlights the top. Click once and release. Push forward on the mouse and type in 0.75. Enter. And now we have our block of wood as it is right after you would cut it. 12 inches long, five and a half inches wide, and three quarters of an inch thick. What we're gonna do next is orbit to the side here, holding that mouse wheel down and turning the mouse to the side. Uh, when you actually make your clock, you can choose to do an angled chamfer bit, which is just an angle in the corner, or a cove, which is a curve. For the model, we're only gonna do the chamfer because it's a lot harder to do the cove and sketch up. A lot of things have to line up perfectly. So we're gonna model just the uh, chamfer. To do that, we're gonna use our tape measure tool first. So T for tape measure, it's also down here in the measuring tools. We're going to uh, go to this vertical edge, make sure it's red and says on edge. You're gonna click once and release. And you'll our dotted guideline shows up. We're gonna pull it along the green axis and we're going to type in 0.25 for a quarter of an inch and hit enter. So now this guideline is a quarter of an inch away from the uh, edge of the block here. That's going to give us a reference point for the top of our angle. Next, we're going to go L for the line tool, which is the pencil over here, but L gives you the line tool. Uh, we're going to zoom in here. You can see how it is at a gray box with a red X and says intersection. We're gonna be lining it up from there to the midpoint on here. So we're gonna click once on that. And we're actually not gonna go midpoint. We're gonna to go to where it's pink, it gives you a pink line for a 45 degree angle because it's a 45 degree chamfer. And we're going to click, there we go. So now you have this line, it should look just like that. Again, so you see that, you're going to uh, start at the intersection, click and release the mouse, drag your uh, cursor over to the edge, and when it turns pink, you're going to click. Okay, we're going to erase our tool with E, and erase that guideline like that. Now hit the select tool again with the space bar. We're going to make this chamfered edge angle all the way around the top. So what we're gonna do is click the top so that it highlights. And then over here in the menu, you see right here is the push-pull menu. If you click on that, we need to follow me, which is like these kind of rings wrapped around each other. 
You're going to click the follow me tool and then you're going to click right in this angled box in the corner and then all the edges magically chamfer themselves. So we're getting that. You can take a quick little zoom out and orbit. All the edges work. They're all chamfered automatically. So what we're going to do is then uh, go back to our select key. So we're going to do triple click on this clock base. One, two, three. And you'll notice that the whole thing turns blue. Once you've got that triple clicked and the whole thing selected, you're going to right click with the mouse and click make group. That is going to be very important later on. That locks all of this into one piece. So we have the make group. Next, what we're going to do is come off to the side over here to the left of the origin. We're going to make the clock faces. So we're going to use the rectangle tool again with the R key. And right along the red axis, you're going to click once and release. Draw out a rectangle in this direction. We're going to make it five and a half inches long by three quarters of an inch wide. So we're going to type in 5.5 comma 0.75 enter. So we get a five and a half inch long by three quarter inch wide rectangle. Then what we're going to do is push pull with the P key. So push pull with the P key. You're going to click once and release and push forward. And then you are going to type in 5.5 enter to make it now five and a half tall and five and a half wide. Next, we're going to triple click on this piece of wood now. So triple click, one, two, three. You've selected the whole thing. We're going to copy and paste this twice. So copy is control C. So control C to copy it. Then we're going to come off to the side here. You can pan over, you can zoom over. We're going to paste it, control V. So make sure it kind of lines up here. Paste once, control V to paste a second time. And now we have this. With this one already selected, this can be your square clock face as one of your three design options. So if that's already all selected, right click and make that a group. That way that stays in one piece. Okay? We're going to come to the middle one and this is going to be our round clock face. So we have rounded edges. To do that, you're going to hit the A key for arcs. So you get this arc symbol. It's also over here. We are going to go along the middle of the edge here. So you see the teal colored midpoint. We're going to click once and release. And then come over to the other midpoint on the right side. And release, click and release. And then you're going to bring it up to the top to the midpoint or it says half circle. Click and release. Now we have these edges here. So we're going to push pull using our P key for push pull. We're going to select this one's already selected. So we click once and release. You're going to push forward. And you notice how that went into the back edge. So if you put your cursor even with that back edge, it goes that far and it disappears. So you come over to this side, make sure this corner is highlighted, click once and release, drag it forward, and it's done. To protect that again, we're going to turn it into a group. So select tool with the space bar, triple click, right click, make it a group. Don't worry about the corners there, that just shows the full square dimensions around the piece, what it was, that locks it in. The last one we're going to do over here is our angled clock face. So we're going to use our tape measure tool with the T key. We're going to put some guidelines on here so we can get our corners lined up just right. So from the top, make sure you're on the front face, not on the back edge there. So on the front face here, click and release going down. So you got to make sure the line is blue because we're on the Z axis. You're going to type in 1.5 for one and a half inches and click enter. So we've got one and a half inches here. You're going to go to the left edge. Same thing. Click once and release. Drag it to the right along the red axis, the Z axis, X axis, sorry. You're going to type in 1.5 and enter. Then you'll go to the right edge. Click and release. Move along the red axis to the left 
and type 1.5 and enter. What that's done is measured an inch and a half over and down for both of these corners. Next, we're going to hit the L key for line. L key for line. We're going to come here and put it right on the intersection of that edge of the piece of wood and the guideline. Make sure it says intersection. Click once and release. And you're going to come down here to where it says intersection. Notice it's pink because it's a perfect 45 degree angle. That's what we want. Once you get that lined up and it's intersection, intersection, click and release. Now we have our corner. Do the same thing over here. Intersection, click, release to intersection, click and release. We have our corners. Next, we are going to erase with E, the eraser, these guidelines, just the guidelines. Do not erase the angles we just made. Once you have it like this, just like how we did the circle, we're going to push pull with the P key on the corners. Push, release, move forward, and click. Highlight, push, release. There we go. So now we have our angled clock face. Just like the other two previously, go to Select Tool with the space bar, triple click, right click, and make a group. So you will have to figure out which one of these clock face designs you want to use on your clock model and make in the shop. You still need to keep the other clock faces on this file though, so that we can see you know how to make them. Panning over with the H key to over here, we're going to make the parts for the charging stand next. So again, we're gonna use the rectangle tool key with R. You're going to, along the red line, click and release and drag a rectangle out this way. We're gonna make this four and a half inches by three quarters of an inch. So we're going to type in 4.5 comma 0.75 and enter. So that gives us a rectangle four and a half by three quarters of an inch. We're going to need this exact dimension again here in a couple of steps. So what we're going to do is double click, two clicks, click, click. We get the outline and surface there. We're going to copy it with a control C, so control C copy. And we're gonna paste it with control V. We're gonna just gonna move that off to the side. We don't need it right this second, but we will here in just a moment. Okay, so coming back to here, this is gonna be the parts of the charging stand. So this will be the front face. We're gonna build the little spacer and then the legs in the back. So next again, rectangle tool. We go off of this corner right here. You're going to click and release, drag it out like this. We're going to type in the dimensions to make it one and a half by three quarters. So it's 1.5 comma 0.75 enter. Okay. Now to make it easy, we have to make four of these total. So we're going to double click just on this rectangle. Click, click. Notice how just that turned blue. If we triple clicked, this whole thing would turn blue. We don't want that. We want just this little rectangle we just made. So two clicks. We're going to copy this again, control C and copy. Then we're going to paste it first time right here. So you notice how the corner lines up and it locks right on the corner. That's what we want. So we're going to line up there. We're going to paste it again, control V. But we're going to put it off to the side here. Then we're going to grab this lower right hand corner, the end point, click and release, line it up with the end point of the first rectangle and click. Control V and paste again and click. So now we have the front face of the charging stand, the two middle spacers, and the back legs. We're going to push pull these up into three dimensional pieces now. There's a nice little shortcut with the push pull, push pull. So if you go to this side angle, P key for push pull, we only have to enter the dimensions once for each piece here. So in this back leg, you're going to click and release, push forward to start bringing it up. Now this is a inches mark with a fraction. So we got to be careful about it. this is the one time in dimensions you use the space. 
So we need this to be two and one eighth inches. So we've got it moved forward. Okay, so we're going to type in two space one slash eight. So look on the dimensions window, two space one slash eight and hit enter. And then it makes it two and an eighth inches. So you can double check on my measurement there, two and one eighth inches. The nice little shortcut is we go back to our push pull tool, the P key on this one. We don't have to risk typing in the measurement wrong. We click once and release and start moving forward. All we have to do is match our cursor to the top edge of the other block. So we just come over here, match it to that edge, and it's the exact same height. It auto matches. It's one of the really nice things about SketchUp. We're going to come to the middle here. We're going to click and release and push forward. This one goes one and a quarter inches. So we're going to type in 1.25 and enter. So 1.25 gives us one and a quarter inches. This one needs to match it. So just like before, click and release, push forward, match your cursor to the corner and click. This front one needs to be the same height as the back blocks. But to do that, we're gonna have to do a couple steps. So first you're going to click and release and match it to the middle. Then you can come up and match it to the back. It'll match to the height of whatever piece is next to it first. So now we've got this all matched up. You can see we got our middle cut out there. Okay. This is where we come back to our little rectangle here. So what we're going to do is this piece is an inch and a quarter high, which is the same as the middle. So what we're going to do is with the push pull key active, we are going to so we got our P key, our push pull is active. We're gonna click, release, go forward, and then match it to the height of the middle block. So it's the same height. Now we need to get this up here. So what we're gonna do is triple click this piece, one, two, three, and we have to move it up here. Anytime you move an object in SketchUp, you need to grab a bottom corner so that it's easier to line up. So what we're going to do is take this bottom right-hand corner here because it's closest and easiest to put it here. So we're going to hit the M for move. It's also over here. Grab that bottom corner on the end point. Click once and release. And we're going to drag it up here onto that corner and click. So now that piece is fully up, we have a full three-dimensional charging stand. What we're gonna do then is triple click on this to turn this whole charging stand into one piece. Otherwise, it's like 40 plus pieces. We don't wanna mess with that. So triple click, one, two, three, right click, make it a group. Okay, so now we have each part of this. The charging stand's a group, the base is a group, each clock face is a group. So all the pieces are locked together. So now is when you start figuring out which pieces you're going to do and where they're going to go. The placement doesn't really matter. You just can't have the clock face directly in front of the charging stand or vice versa. And the pieces cannot hang out over the edge. So for the sake of example, I'm going to take a charging stand here and click M for move and grab this bottom corner. To make sure I'm at the right height, I'm just going to match it to the edge here first edge of the base. So I see it's on here. I'm going to put mine over to the left and move it this way, still on the face. And I want to rotate it. To rotate, you're going to, part of the message is there, keep accidentally hitting the button. To rotate it, you're going to use the Q key or the rotate tool. And you need to grab a corner and it needs to be on the blue axis, which is showing here. So I'm gonna grab that back corner. I clicked here, and I'm gonna grab this corner here so that I know I'm rotating. You can go any angle you want, really. I'm gonna go of an angle about that. But I can see that doesn't work because it's hanging off the back, and we can't do that. So then once I get that set, I'm gonna move it with the M key, and put it, so it's right up here on edge, 
just barely on. I'm going to move it just a hair off the corner along the red axis. So now you can see it is just off the edge here, just off the edge here, just off the edge here. So that is where I want it to be. I'm going to take, for this example, my round clock face. And I'm going to grab the corner of that with the Move tool, bring it over, put it on the base first, and then I can move that to wherever I want. If I want to rotate it, I can rotate it. If I don't want to, I don't have to. I can have it more to the front, I can have it to the back, and I can have it in the middle. It really doesn't matter. That is your choice with your design. You just want to be... Uh, making sure that it's fully within the space on top of the uh, base so that it's not hanging off anywhere. Okay, so now I've got my face, I've got my charging stand on the base, and I've got my two other pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and bring this one closer because when we actually print these out with your dimension, dimensions and measurements on there, we need to be able to see that you made those. The last couple steps for this involve putting color to it, and then adding pictures. So to add color, we're going to use the paint tool, which is either the paint bucket here or the B key. To get to wood, if you want to make it look like wood, in the menu here, you click on the magnifying lens. It'll bring up a list of textures and color options that SketchUp has that look like realistic things. So down at the very bottom of the list is wood. Now, we have four colors of stain. So one is natural, which is like this kind of wood floor. So if you color that, it gives you a wood that's just a little bit more golden yellow color than what your actual wood is. We also have cherry, which is this one right here. A little bit brown with a little bit more red tint to it. Our early American is this color here. It's kind of a chocolatey brown color. Uh, looks kind of like chocolate milk in shade there. And the last one we have is English chestnut, which is brown with a touch of red and orange in it. Uh, different shades uh, for different things that you like. The color you choose actually would depend on your uh, design that you want to put on the clock face at the very least. Okay, so you can pick and choose. You can do whatever. I'm going to make these all natural. Now, you notice, since it's a group, the whole thing gets colored. Instead of having to do each edge separately, that whole group gets colored. So I'm going to go with natural on this one here. I'm leaving these uncolored. I don't need to color them. I just need to make sure that they are uh, there and present. Once you get to this point, we need to add a picture. And if you haven't done so, make sure you click save. This is a really good time to save. To get the picture, you first have to identify what it is you actually want to put on your clock. One helpful thing is to make sure that your teacher has approved your design before you do that. Okay, You need to have your design approved, which is going to be very important. Once that has been approved, you're going to actually find a picture of that online if it is a logo. So, for example, I want to make this a uh, Titans logo clock. So I will open a tab and click Papio South, Papillion South, Titans logo. When you find a logo, if you click Images, you want to find one that has a uh, transparent background. So like this first one, you know, it has a little checkerboard. That's what we want. Uh, the easy ways you can go about this is to uh, right click on that, save image as, and on your computer, I think it works in your uh, Chromebooks as well, save it to documents or to uh, downloads, you can save it to documents, call it something that you know what it's going to be, BJH new logo. Okay. Then we click save. It'll show that that's saved. When you go into SketchUp then, what you need to do, since this is a group, we're going to double click on the clock face so you see the editing lines around it. Then what we're going to do is click the three lines and go Import My Device, the 
my device and documents. And then here is this file that we have. And you're going to click open and you're going to go for image. Okay, now it's on there. You cannot just click randomly. What you need to do is put it on the face, so make sure it's visible, and it's on the green endpoint. You have to make sure it's visible. Even though it looks bigger than the clock face right now, it's fine. You're gonna click once, and you drag it out to size. Now, obviously, you can't have it sticking out past that. So leave yourself a little bit of room there, because we're gonna move this and center it. Once you have that on there, you're gonna hit the M key and you're gonna move it up into position. Now, if it's not the exact size and scale that you want it on your actual clock, that's okay. We just wanna get it roughly to size and in position so that we know what it's gonna look like. So once you have that, you're going to click off to the side. If you wanna put another uh, design on the charging stand or down on the base, that's totally doable. It's the same process. Find a picture, save it, and you're gonna go those three lines, import from device, and then import that. Before you do that, make sure you double click to edit that object, okay? All doable. Once you've got that part done, make sure you save it. Now you're going to look at the measurements documents that are in your folder. Uh, to show you how to add dimensions and what dimensions to add. Uh, so if you're going to add dimensions, those are under the measurement tool over here. So by the tape measure, it is this dimensions tool. To do that, basically, you're going to click corners of objects. So click the corner of the face there, click twice, pull it up. If you're doing the round or the angled clock face, you have to go off the center you don't have a corner to measure the top. So center point, center point, pull it off to the side like that. Okay, same thing for your base. I'll be clicking edges and pulling that down to get your dimensions like so. Okay, so look at the design uh, of the measurements on that worksheet. What direction you go to depends on what side your uh, charging stand is on so that we can get the measurements of all those little pieces in there. All right, so thanks for watching. Hopefully you worked along and your model looks as nice as this. Have a great day.